Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer, and today we're taking a look and installing the Demco Stay and Play Duo Proportional Braking System on a 2021 Jeep Wrangler. There's five main components when flat towing a vehicle, and starting on the vehicle side, you're going to have the base plate, and that's going to attach to the frame or the structural support of the vehicle, allowing an attachment point not only for our tow bar, but for all the rest of our components. And that leads us to the tow bar, which is going to be the connection point between that base plate and the hitch on the RV. Now also attached to the base plate is going to be where our safety cables go and that's just going to make sure in case of a disconnect we're still attached to our RV. We also have our diode wiring which is going to transmit the light signals from the RV to the towed vehicle including your running lights, brake lights and turn signals and that way people behind you know what you're doing. You also have your supplemental braking system and that way the vehicle slows and stops when you apply the brakes on the RV and also there's a breakaway cable here so in case everything fails catastrophically it's going to pull this cable and put the brakes on the vehicle so it's not rolling down the highway. Now your braking system is going to be required in a lot of states and that's going to allow you to apply the brakes on your RV and it's going to match to your towed vehicle so that way it slows down and stops when you slow down and stop on your RV and it's just going to make for a better towing experience. But also in case of an accidental disconnect you have a breakaway cable here that will pull and that way the brakes are going to be applied bringing the vehicle to a stop and that way it's not rolling down the highway. Now, as I mentioned before, we have our vehicle mounted LED system to let us know when the vehicle's having the brakes applied. And I've mounted mine up on the window, so if you have a rear view camera on your RV, you'll see it illuminate when the brakes are being applied or if the brake disconnect has been pulled. We have our G-Force controller that's mounted up in our Jeep, and this is one of the main components of the braking system that has a mercury switch in it, and that's going to allow you to adjust the sensitivity of the braking that's being applied to your towed vehicle, custom catering it to your towing experience. And it also, with that G-Force, as the name implies, as the vehicle kind of leans forward or gets G-Force from stopping on the RV, it's going to apply those brakes proportionally. So if you're braking just a little, the vehicle is going to brake a little, but if you're braking hard, the vehicle is going to do the same. Now the main unit is essentially an air compressor and that's going to pull vacuum from the brake booster line and run to the cylinder on the brake pedal and that way it actuates. Now ours is tucked up kind of behind the bumper here in a nice safe spot and that's the thing is you can mount it wherever you need to in the engine bay but the Wrangler is relatively tight. So when we get to our install installation portion you'll be able to see where I mounted it up and hopefully that works for you. Now, speaking of that installation, let's take a look at that now and we'll walk through the steps and kind of show you our layout and that way you can mimic it on your Wrangler. Now, putting a braking system on your vehicle may seem a little bit daunting, but honestly, it's really not too bad. The hardest part, I think, is laying out your components and then you're really just making it connection points between them all. Now this engine bay is pretty tight and so our main unit needs to find a place that's safe to mount. It can be in the engine bay or you can also mount it up front. We have this underneath our skid plate uh, and this is a nice protected area. It also makes connections pretty easy because it's nice and open here. So I bent the upper tab and that kind of slotted between the bumper and where the skid plate goes and that kind of holds it in place but also I ran two self-tapping screws into the metal, so it's pretty secure here. I don't worry about this rattling loose over time. Another one of our main components, and this has to mount in the front of the vehicle, it's gonna be a breakaway switch. Now, the bracket that we have here uh, came with our base plate, and I used just a little angle here to drop this back a little bit. Some of your other ones you can get crafty. Pretty much anywhere uh, that you can mount it that's solid is gonna be good up front. And also you can bend the tab if you need to, to get that mounted. Now our other components are going to live inside the vehicle underneath the driver's side dash. And that's because our cylinder is going to mount to our brake pedal. And this is what's going to be performing the braking on the vehicle. So when it gets the signal, it's going to use air pressure from the main unit to pull on our pedal, bringing the vehicle to a slow or stop. Now we also have our G-Force and that's going to be mounted in uh, it needs to be facing the passenger side of the vehicle. On the Jeeps, it works out pretty well. This plastic panel, you can just drill that in and mount that. Um, now, all of our wires that come off of this are going to feed through a grommet that's slightly above that. Um, so that's how we're gonna get all of our wires passed as well as our airline tube. 
Now, as far as mounting your cylinder goes, you're going to want to make sure you have clearance is where your foot sits. That way it's not bumping against it while driving normally. But also you're going to kind of want it at an angle. Uh, that way when it pulls, it's going to want to swing that pedal towards the firewall. So it really comes down to mounting up your bracket, um, you know, to where it's at a good point, nice little angle, and also not going to bind. And really it's pretty simple to just run some uh, self-tapping into those brackets as well as our mounting portion and then you're going to cinch up the wire through that by making a loop and using an Allen. Now, you do want to have a little bit of slack in here. That way it's not pulling as you're just normally driving. So I just kind of uh, have enough to where I can push it with my finger and it's going to have a little bit of uh, slack there. But uh, overall, you can always adjust it too, but you just don't want those brakes being applied while normal driving. We also picked up a Roadmaster stoplight switch, which is specific to this vehicle. It mounts up uh, using factory hardware and an arm, and it has a plunger. And that way, when the brake pedal is applied, that plunger is going to extend, letting us know when the brakes are being applied on the towed vehicle. So whether or not you have the, state, uh, the wireless coach link or the LED indicator light, this is how you're going to allow that to work. And then our final component is going to be our indicator light that I've mounted up here just using double sided tape. I went ahead and routed this down and that's where we made our connection to our stoplight switch as well as some of our existing wiring. Now this is a great option, but if you don't have a rear camera to see that it's indicating that it's braking, you can pick up the wireless coach link, which is going to wirelessly transmit that to the dash on the RV. Uh, there's gonna be a box that'll light up and also have an alarm if you want to. And that way you can look at your dash and know that the vehicle's putting the brakes on. Now, to make our wired connections, we're going to start here at our operating unit where you're going to have four wires coming off of there. You have a blue, a brown, a red, and a black. And your blue and brown are going to connect to the wires from our breakaway switch, which are going to be black and orange. The red and black is going to make its way towards the G-Force controller, so towards the grommet of the vehicle where the red and black will attach to the red and black from the G-Force. So the breakaway switch has a black and orange wire. The black is gonna to go to the blue wire from the operating unit, and that's just a simple connection. And then our orange wire is gonna to attach to the brown, and we're gonna to want to jumper those together to, I had excess brown wire. That's gonna run up to our battery with an inline fuse holder. And so that makes its way on the passenger side up to the battery. Now all of our connections are made with heat shrink butt connectors. And so if it's living outside the vehicle, I highly recommend picking these up. That way, when you crimp it down, you take a heat gun to it, it's gonna seal up and make sure that it's a waterproof connection. It's just gonna prolong the lifespan of the wires. Now that brown wire that we extended to make its way up to the battery, I just kind of fed up uh, through the passenger side until I made it over to the battery where I used a heat shrink butt connector to connect to our fuse holder and then finally to the 12 volt power from our battery. Now, I highly recommend during the whole process, don't put your fuse in the fuse holder until you have all of your components hooked up. You don't want power running through that. The red and black wires from the operating unit are tying into the red and black wires from the G-Force controller. And there is a grommet that's kind of on the right side of the brake booster. It just twists off. And what I did is made sure I had everything passed through and then I drilled a hole in the center of it. That way we can seal that up later. Now, parts of uh, this braking system ties into your diode wiring. So when running your diode wiring, I highly suggest pulling up an extra length of it. That way you can tie into it just as I've done here. So we have the wires that are coming off our G-Force unit. They're gonna splice into our diode wiring. We also have a separate ground. There's a factory ground that you can tie into pretty easily here. Um, so now we'll just trace these wires in to our G-Force controller. And this is simply so when we're tied into our RV and the brakes are being applied, it's gonna send that signal through here and let our braking system know when to apply the brakes. So the wires feed through our grommet, and so off our G-Force controller, we'll have the red, black, green, yellow, and white wires. Currently, I have my wires kind of hanging down to show you all at home how it looks. Uh, I'll go back and tie these up with zip ties, but our indicator light, as I mentioned, I mounted up on the dash. You can also put it on your rear view mirror, and then that wire is going to run down where you're going to have two bullet connectors, and one's going to be red and one's going to be black. Now the black is pretty easy. I used a three-way connector to attach to our black wire from the G-Force, so I just cut that, and that's gonna be a system ground. So that's an easy way to get your ground system for the light. 
Now the red is going to tie directly into our stoplight switch. Now the stoplight switch has two wires off of it. It doesn't matter which one you use, but you'll go ahead and make that connection. Now the stoplight switch also needs to get 12 volt power to illuminate or send the signal. So we ran a red wire off of there and that also goes through the firewall making its way over to the battery. So the wire from that stoplight switch to get the 12 volt, I just kind of ran along here. Again, I'm gonna tie all this up to make it look good. And then that's gonna go to our fuse holder where our 10 amp fuse lives and then attach to our battery. So that takes care of our electrical connections, but we do have two air connections also coming off the main unit. We're gonna have quarter inch uh, push connect hose. And then we also have our larger rubber hose. And we're gonna make this way up to where our booster is and our quarter inch line is gonna feed inside to run to our cylinder. Now our airlines, I routed it up the same way that I ran my red and black wires. And then the scary part that everyone worries about is tying into your brake line here off your booster. So you're gonna to go to your brake booster, trace this line, and you'll see that there's a uh, connector here. To make it a little bit easier, I actually separated this clip. You're just gonna to wanna to peel this back and then you're gonna be able to pull this out, making it a little bit easier to kind of maneuver it. So trace this and you're gonna to wanna to cut on a nice straight line. Um, you know, doing it on a curve is gonna be a little bit tricky to make some of the connections, but really all we're doing is just teeing into that factory line. So our factory line you can see goes here. So it just makes the connection off the 90 and that just continues the normal flow. Now we wanna make sure that our braking system's not pulling from the crankcase of the vehicle. So we have our one-way check valve. So you're gonna want the black uh, part of that check valve towards the engine and that green towards the um, operating unit. So uh, the hose will slide over this hard plastic lines that they use, but you're going to want to use a hose clamp to clamp that down. Um, and I also recommend using a little bit of silicone to slide that on as it can get a little bit tricky. So really you're just going to have a little hose here, your one-way check valve, and then go to your T. And then this hose runs back to our operating unit. So that way it can pull from the air on the booster. And our quarter inch line is just gonna feed through the grommet where it's gonna connect to the push connect fitting on our air cylinder. Now, when cutting your airline tube, you're probably gonna have some extra. Uh, it may be tempting to just use a pair of normal snips here. The problem is, is it's gonna give it kind of an almond shape and those push connect fittings are meant to slide in here and then they bite onto it. And having this shape is not gonna be conducive to uh, stopping leaks from happening. So I use a tubing cutter. Uh, you're gonna wanna go as square as possible and it makes it really easy to get a nice clean cut that's gonna be nice and flat. So square it up as much as possible. That way when you put it in your push connect, it's gonna be a nice clean connection. And you can see here on our push connect, and we just did that, push that in place. Once all of your connections are made, you can go ahead and put that 20 amp fuse in the fuse holder. Um, you're also gonna wanna make sure to flip the toggle on your G-Force controller to on. And the best way to test before hitting the road is pulling your breakaway switch. You should hear that compressor kick on and your cylinder should actuate bringing that pedal closer to the ground. You're also gonna wanna check to make sure that your indicator light's working or that your wireless coach link is working as well. And that was a look and installation of the Demco Stay and Play Duo Proportional Braking System on a 2021 Jeep Wrangler.